Hello, everyone. Um, this is Jonathan Stewart. Uh, and hi, I'm Emma Moss. And we are your AI systems leads. Um, we're here today to talk about Magic School. We're excited. Um, what we'll be covering today um, over two actual bite-sized PDs is we'll first talk about what AI is, how does it work, our resources in CSD, what is Magic School AI, and how do you log in with CSD Docs. If you follow with my um, um, session, you'll talk about Magic School AI for teacher planning, and there's some of the things we cover there. And if you're coming with mine, you'll look through what you can use it for in the classroom, which covers what Magic Student is, how to create a Magic Student room, customizing those tools, and then actually sharing your room out with your students. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is our MTSS framework. As you know, this is new this year, um, and we're excited for it. And we fit in with high quality teaching and learning and technology integration. And that's because we want to do best practices for using AI in your classroom and with your students. So let's jump in first and talk a little bit about what AI is. This is our common definition. It's a branch of computer science aimed at creating machines that mimic human intelligence. For us, this is a broad category. We also have what are called chatbots. So those are computer programs designed to simulate conversation with human users. Um, that's with text-based interfaces. Sometimes we're starting to see those evolve. But chatbots utilize artificial intelligence. And so when you're working with Magic School, you'll be using a chatbot that uses artificial intelligence. We also have some different types of AI. So we have a reactive AI, which is just responding to data. We have predictive AIs, which analyze data in terms of making predictions. And then we have generative AI, which creates new content and generates ideas and different data patterns and all those things that are really exciting. When you talk about AI today, you're probably talking about generative AI, and that's what Magic School uses. So how does AI work? AI learns from data by noticing patterns. Um, we call that training. So these models have been trained on lots and lots of data, and then using that data, they make decisions. So they use that training to improve over time. Um, Magic School is just using lots of training, and if you, this seems similar, this is how humans work too. And so when you're working with an AI, just know that it's using data to make decisions to generate new content. In Canyons, we also have some resources to support you. So if you're wanting to learn more about AI or connect, um, Jonathan and I and the team that we work with has a website. It's canyonsdistrict.org AI, super easy. And we also have what we call the view. So it is our guidebook and framework. And it has supporting resources for all of our stakeholders, whether you're a teacher or a student or an administrator, and has different links there that you can explore to help you learn more about AI. Now, that was generally about AI. We're going to talk about the specific tool that we're going to talk about today. What is Magic School AI? In a word, awesome. Magic School is a set of 60 easy to use tools. It helps with lesson planning, differentiation, communication. It helps support your students. It's something you can use with students. It's something that helps you with planning as a teacher. Obviously, we have sessions on each of those. Um, what it allows you to do is utilize AI and use your AI skills in an environment designed for teachers, designed for education, and designed for the safety of students in mind. And so that's the part that's really cool. Let's get the logistics over with. How do I get there? Well, the good news is, is that the Magic School has a free version and a paid version. Um, when I go through my video in particular, you'll see me talk about the paid features versus the free features. But the free, free, free version is pretty robust, easy to use. You can get started right away. So what you'll do, we have screenshots here, is you'll just type in magicschool.ai. You could do a Google search. That would come up too. You'll have, you'll have a whole big home page. You'll notice up in the corner, it will say log in or sign up for free. Now, if you have not signed up before, you'll obviously hit sign up for free. You go to login if you already have an account. It'll bring you to this sign in page and it's going to ask you, are you an educator or a student? Pretty sure you're an educator. So go ahead and hit the backpack right there. And then it will prompt you, do you want to sign in with email or do you want to sign in with one of the following ways? What we recommend, what we highly, highly recommend yes. is that you sign in with Google. When you click on that, it will take you to your CSD docs. Uh, ask you if you want to log in. Log in with CSD docs and use that as your account. And then from there, you're all set to go. Now. So next steps. 
Um, if you are watching the rest of this, you're either watching Jonathan's, which is going to go over magic school for teacher use in more detail, or you'll be watching mine, which is going to go over magic student and how you can use this amazing tool, or what did you say? Awesome. Awesome, awesome tool it's awesome. with your students. So thanks for watching and we'll connect with you soon. Hello, everybody. Now that we've <coughs> had a chance to come back, we're going to be focused on what this session is going to be about today. It's about helping teachers and other staff with lesson planning and other educational tasks. Now you'll notice, if you look, we've already gone over defining AI, magic school, and how to log in. So now we're going to look at how we can use this tool, use a tool within magic school for teacher output and planning. So here's kind of what we're going to be doing together. I'm going to show you viewing tools, teacher tools versus student tools how to find tools for teachers, how to favorite them, how to move over output, what your output history is, and then I'll show you what the chat, what the RENA is within Magic School. So let's go ahead and head over, ignore my messy tabs, to Magic School. Once we're here, this is where we get to this room. You'll notice that at the top, it has Magic School and Magic Student. Magic Student is for teachers. That's what Emma will be going over next week. Magic School is what you'll find here. This is the probably the main section of Magic School. Um, we'll start with looking at the Magic Tools, which is where it defaults to when you start out. Now, to find a tool, you can just scroll and look. I tend to do that, especially knowing they've created some new things. In fact, I'm seeing things that I haven't seen before because they've added them. They are adding to this list all the time, which is great. Um, I will point out especially that there's a smart goal creator, which you may need with CTES coming up, but you can just scroll and look. However, the other thing you can do is you, they have these lists curated by plan. So if you want to see just what's new, you can go there. I need to support my students there. Um, this is where you can make accommodations, do things specific for a BIP, IEP 504, behavior interventions, um, writing, uh, writing a draft of an IEP, writing a um, language plan, etc. I can uh, find things for communication, so rewriting text, responding to emails, writing thank you notes, doing a class newsletter, that sort of thing. Uh, report card comments. As we know, report cards are will be coming up in not too long. If I mean any questions, do planning content, etc. I can do that. So the intellectual, like, you know, I, I just need extra things in helping thinking through something, like finding examples and non examples, how to make sure I have clear directions. There are the tools there for you. The other thing is you can just search for tools. So you're like, does Magic Club, anything about rubrics? Um, which is not true because I know it does. Oh, make sure you're in the all category and you can say, okay, I want to, oh, there's a rubric generator and you can find it there. Um, and again, if you're searching like that, you could you probably want to make sure you have all tools checked. And the other thing you can do, uh, once <coughs> you'll notice I have some favorite tools here. This is where you can have kind of a handy list of uh, ones you use all the time. So for me, like a text level or a sentence starter might be good. Um, I like to favorite professional email and letter recommendation because those are things that I personally probably use more often. But if you find a tool, for instance, um, Magic School just created this presentation generator, which get, lets you um, create a presentation um, just with inputs. It'll uh, create it in Google Slides, it'll create it in PowerPoint, etc. I'm like, oh, Nelly, I want that one. I want to be able to use that one all the time. All you have to do is hit the star to favorite it. And you'll notice it's added to favorites. And now it's, notice it's here at the top so that when I go out and come back in, voila, it is 
in order. And then you can actually customize and change the order um, so you have your favorite, favorite ones on the top. Um, let's go ahead and get into one of the tools so you can see what it's like. I am going to pick um, professional email just as an example. So you'll notice that it, ha it gives you prompts on what sort of things you need to include. This one is very simple and I'll, as I show you outputs, I'll play with it. Sometimes they can get much more complex. So let's use rubric generator. That's one I actually like a lot. Um, sometimes it requires many more, many more, much more information for you to put in. It just kind of depends on what the tool is and what information it needs to give you what you're looking for. But we'll go with professional email because that's pretty, that's a pretty basic one. I am going to go ahead and write a professional email to Emma Moss. And then, uh, because she is my colleague, so she's someone I could communicate with. And notice it, ha it can give you an, an exemplar. So if you're not quite sure what things you need to be put, you can hit exemplar. And it will give you an idea of how, an example of how to write this so that it makes sense um, for the output that you want. So you'll notice the exemplar is email regarding changes in the basketball season. We need to make sure that we have one administrator there and I'll start a Google form. So you'll notice having some details really helps. If you want to, you can also upload um, information that it may need either to include in the document. Um, you know, you like, for example, for this, you could eat, this email that's in the exemplar, you could say um, the changes are uploaded in this PDF. You could link that PDF. You can also link to Google Drive. You can link to U YouTube videos. You could also link to OneDrive. Um, so it has options where you can upload things that are already created to help you write your email or write your rubric or, you know, there's many um, things that you can kind of add those attachments of things that already exist. So I'm going to get rid of that exemplar. We're going to clear that. So again, we're going to write to Emma Moss. Um, we're going to write an email to say, um, I need to make sure we are ready for the meeting next week. Excuse me, that's the author's name. That's who's writing it. So that would be me. That would not be Emma. You guys get to deal, deal with lovely things in real time. So this is who's writing it, not who it's to. Because off, honestly, a professional email um, usually has a wider audience. Make sure this talks... Start next week. Teachers at the end of the month and students on October 1st. That is not what actually is happening. I'm using that as an example. So I would just include as many details as I think need to be covered. I hit generate and then Magic School will do its thing. And you'll notice it translated into something that's much more, that sounds very much more professional. Now, notice I have a few options. Um, uh, another thing I just want to note, you can use mics. So if it's easier for you to talk into, um, to, to 
uh, talking to your output, you can do that. Okay, this is where our output is. So this is kind of the next thing. This is what's called output history. So I have a paid version of Magic School. If you do not, you will just see the copy and edit. You will not see the, these exports, so these exports will be very limited. But I'm able to do a lot more with it because I have a paid version. So I can just copy it over and then I can go straight to my Outlook or I can go to a Google Doc. Um, I'll just set up a new one. Uh, Google Doc. So I'm just opening up a new Google Doc uh, email and I will just go ahead and copy and paste it. And you notice the output, say it just goes right there. And you can do that, obviously, just copy and pasting to whatever you're actually using. Um, you can edit the prompt. And so you can actually go in. Uh, and again, this is the paid version. You can go in and say, OK, that was good. but. I actually need to give more details. I said next week, but I really meant October 2nd on this one. Um, you know, October 6th, and this one. It, I didn't give it enough information, but I can just go in and edit it as is. So I can actually go in and edit, which I believe is a paid feature. I can export. So I can export to Word. I can print, and I can export to Google Docs. You know, I just hit export and then it asks me where, um, what account I want to go to, which I think just, this is just the first time because I've never actually used this feature. And notice if I go, it'll show me where it created the Google Doc. It's going to take a few moments while it, it creates and shows me where it put it. Um, it will put it in your My Drive kind of as a default, just so you're aware. And <clears throat> we'll come back to that knowing it's coming, but I'll, I'll come back and show you some of the other things. Um, it can actually read it aloud. And then also you can actually save the resource. Um, this is, again, a paid feature to where you can actually um, save things in your output history, which I'll show you in a minute, and I'll say... Um, AI um, schedule email. And I'll hit save. That way I know that it's saved and how it's saved. Now it's still spinning over here. It, it, it will eventually load. Um, every once in a while it has trouble, but it will eventually load. Um, some other things you can do. You can You'll notice that oftentimes when it produces output, it will ask you more. It will give you some prompts to think about, like, should we provide an agenda? What are specific topics? So you can actually click on those and it will refine, it will give you questions and prompts to refine your resource if you like. But I like the email as is, so we'll just leave it at that. And notice there's this thumbs up and thumbs down. This is a way for you to kind of let it know that yes, that was actually what I wanted, or no, that was off target. That, um, you know, that actually sounded like a not very professional email. So it gives feedback to the to Magic School, that tool to know, okay, I don't want it more like this. And it helps it know, okay, I will give you le it less like this and more like this. Kind of helps it know what to do over time. Now let's go to Output History. A caution here, if you have a free account, it will only save the last three output histories. If you have a paid account, it'll save as many of them as you want. So notice that it, it has saved my whole history. So I can go in and say, oh, I created a decodable text. I can click on what was done there. Notice I can see a preview here, or I can click actually click on it and see what was ha what happened. And you'll notice that you have this share feature as well, so you can actually share your output publicly. Um, yes, I consent. I realize that 
that I'm agreeing to these terms, the biggest one being that there's no personal identifiable information in anything. Sure. So then I could copy the link and then I can actually send this to my colleagues. So if you created a good decodable text, personal email, rubric, whatever, something for your team, you can actually share that and they can get a copy of it and then they can copy and paste it. So we'll go back to our output history. And you'll notice that this is everything. You can actually bookmark things that you want to have saved. So you can go back to things that maybe you want to refine later or that you um, really want to keep. You can look at things that you've shared. I, I haven't bookmarked anything, but let's say I'm going to book par bookmark um, this inspirational thing right here. So then I know I can go back to that. Um, that inspirational song that I created. That way I can go back to it and find it. I can see what things I've shared. And then I can also look at the resources that I created. Um, it gives you the whole thread that got you there if you want to do that. Or maybe right there, if I can move this control. Um, or I can just click on the resource itself. Then I can copy it to clipboard and do whatever I want with it. So that you notice that there's several ways to go through the outputs that you have. Again, this will be very limited if you're on the free version, but there's a lot. This is where if you have the paid version, it's a, there's a lot of power to it. Um, so anyway, um, the last thing I wanted to touch on really quickly is Reina. So you'll notice that magic tools are something that's laid out very specifically. But let's say you have a project that's more complex or you're not quite sure what you're asking for, or you're used to using ChatGPT, Claude, Microsoft Copilot, uh, Google Gemini, etc. Um, and you want to input something in that style, that's where Reina comes in. Reina works just like a general chatbot does. Keep in mind, this is a general chatbot, but this is one that is focused on and has been trained on education. So it's going to be thinking education before you even start. Notice that they talk about it as your AI instructional coach. So it's kind of a, a general thing. See how it will give you some prompts. Like I need a safe and easy experiment for electricity. Figure, I, I do a lot of psychic examples, so it's guessing that I'm a science teacher. Um, so I might want to say, uh, can I have some ideas for uh, to incorporate a physical movement in my classroom, I teach uh, fifth grade. And notice you can have it translate things. You can ask it questions. Um, these are all actions you can do with the output you get. You can translate it. You can ask it further. You can turn it and ask it further questions. You can have it adjust the length, shorter or longer. You can have it summarize things or just customers basically do anything you want with it. So I'm just gonna click that in. All right, it gives me, look, noticing it gives me like 10 different strategies. That's great. I'm gonna say, uh, what are some specific activities I can try? That's a great idea. So let's see what specific activities, oh. But I love how it's giving me 10, and I can either have it say length, let's do shorter, that list was too long, oh. So now it gives me, uh, I actually want, uh, so now you can tell it what to do. You can say, uh, give me three activities with greater X for each activity. And it will go, okay, 
And so notice that now it's giving me probably what, more of what I actually want. It's telling me, okay, here are the activities and here's how to actually do them. This is more of what I was looking for. I could continue to go on and say, okay, I have math, vocabulary, and science. You could say, actually, I wanted all three of those just for um, ELA and English or all of those for science. So you could go further. But Raina is kind of your all-in-one um, chat GPT uh Copilot, Gemini, Claude style general chatbot. And notice it does have this history over here. So it saves it the history different than it does for the output history in the tools. And if I were to leave Reina and come back, notice that I can pull that history up. Like if you get interrupted by a colleague and then you go back and you're like, oh no, I needed to ask it more information, you can go back to the history. Again, it will only save so much on the free account. Um, you have to have a paid account for it to continue to save your histories. So those are that's some of the basics with using Magic School to plan as a teacher. Um, I hope this was really helpful. Um, one thing I wanted to point out before I point out our resources is it does have some introductory, if you want more information on your own, it does have some introductory things. It has a link to training. This is... Um, the love is basically you just you just showing how much you love. Uh, share the magic is sharing it with a colleague. If you want to upgrade, that's right there too. Um, and and on here on part of the training, you will also see where they have um, places where you can share ideas, generally through social media or other um, chat boards um, inside of Magic School. So if we so think to yourself, what is something you would, you've would you learned today that you can take back with you? Hopefully it's multiple somethings, but um, think about what your commitment will be. Notice we've now checked all the boxes of what we can do with Magic School. There's additional resources again. I highlight it, but you have the magic, that you have the uh, supports I showed you as well as for Magic Student if you watch in this video. There's ideas of use cases of how teachers have been using it. There's our website, here's our team, and I'd love to connect with you. Again, Jonathan Stewart, there's my email, and there's a feedback form if you're so inclined. Thanks, and rock on with Magic School.